You know, I recently saw a video where you were talking about a study that's being conducted by the American Cancer Society uh, to determine how genetics may play a role in our cancer risk. Uh, you were talking uh, with me a little about that earlier, but could you tell a little more about Absolutely. it? Absolutely. I think you're referring to the cancer prevention study number three. Mm -hmm. We've actually done two before this. The whole purpose of the CPS3 study is try to understand, starting with your genes, your genetics, how do, how do, do the decisions you make in terms of what you eat, how much you eat, um, how much you exercise, and how you interact with your environment uh, in terms of like cigarette smoking and, and other toxins. We want to understand with CPS3 how the environment affects the human being through their DNA. So in the CPS3 study, we're selecting people into the study, we're taking blood so we can process them for their DNA, and also we're collecting then a survey that goes on almost 20 or 30 years. So we find out what you're eating, what you're doing, uh, what illnesses do you get over that period of time, and then we look back, we look at that information, we look back and try to match what kind of life choices are associated with certain kinds of DNA predisposed to cancers and other illnesses and even more importantly what kind of life choices may actually reduce your risk for cancer or other kinds of illnesses and that's the purpose of the cancer prevention study number three and it's really the only one of its kind in the world so it's a unique way of trying to understand the impact of environment on the individual through their genes. Wow, I mean, that's got to be a hard study to conduct. Well, it takes a little time. It'll take 20 or 30 years. Wow. So I've enrolled myself into it along with other people. And, wow, I mean, that's and amazing. if I'm lucky enough to be around for 20 years, they'll be collecting that information on me for that long. Wow, that's really neat. I, you're just going down the list and answering all good, my good. questions. It's so neat. Well, you were just talking about this, but what role does the environment play in our cancer risk? Well, what's, what's really important is, is to understand that... Uh, you take the human being as they are with their set of genes and in very rare instances people do inherit genes that almost guarantee they're going to get a certain kind of cancer but for 95 percent of people maybe 98 percent of people um, they may inherit uh, what we call susceptibility genes but those genes aren't turned on unless they um, uh, come in contact with certain things in the environment I'm talking about an expanded view of the environment. So when I talk about environment, I'm just not talking about pollution you breathe in or how the air quality or the water quality is in, in your neighborhood. When I talk about the environment, I'm talking about things like body weight, exercise, uh, diet at large. All of those things make up environmental influences and we know that those things can influence your genes and DNA uh, and, and take a predisposition and turn it into an actual disease like cancer. Wow, you talk about, that's a very good analogy uh, of that it's sort of like a switch, that the genes aren't turned on. And you, that's a good way, an easy way to think of that. Absolutely. So there are things called oncogenes, and yes, I like to use the switch analogy. Uh, the question is, what's switching those things on? And more importantly, what kind of influences at what level are required to switch something on in you versus me. We are uh, almost 99% alike in our DNA, but there are small differences in us that can predispose us to cancer. So the question is, if you can eat, you may be able to eat three sprigs of broccoli a day <laughs> and never get any form of cancer. I may be able to eat tons of broccoli and it not make a difference. So one of the questions that we're really going to try to sort out with these gene environment type of studies is to understand at the individual level what kind of choices do you need to make in order to live a healthy life and protect yourself against disease. It's more than likely those choices may be very different than your friends next door or across the street or even other relatives that you know. And that's where science has to take you to give you information that's relevant to your health and to your well-being that allows you to make good choices. Wow, so it's very, very close but yet very different. Absolutely. So, oh, wow, that, I mean, just talking about this study, it's, it's hard. Yeah, the CPS3 study is, is uh, uh, interesting, it's challenging, uh, CPS1 and 2 
which uh, CPS1 actually helped us, along with a few other studies, make the link between cigarettes and lung cancer. So it was very powerful. We had a million people uh, involved in, in those studies. We'll only have about 300,000 people. But one of the neat things about genetics is if you have a precise genetic profile, you don't need to study a million, two million, three million people and then go through a statistical analysis to figure out what's causing what. If you have the exact genes and you have the gene profile, and then we find out what you ate and how you ate, how you exercised, and what drugs you took, and what other illnesses you had, we can make precise predictions about other people who have DNA and gene profiles just like you. So 300,000 people, uh, it sounds like a lot, but it's a lot less than a million or two million like we've had to do with the other big studies. The more you rely on genes and gene profile, the fewer number of people you, you really need in order to make these association between environment and disease. And so uh, it's difficult, but we're doing it. We're recruiting the people we need to recruit. Uh, CPS3. Mm -hmm. How long has it been going on now? Well, see, we're recruiting for CPS3 right oh, now. Wow. So, in fact, we recruited for CPS3 in Austin, Texas, probably about three or four months ago. We go to different sites in, in different areas, and we uh, one of the unique aspects of a cancer prevention study of the American Cancer Society is anybody can just show up and say, "I want to participate in the study." Uh, if you're between, say, 30 and, and uh, 50 or 60 years of age, if you haven't had cancer before, if you're willing to put up with this nuttiness of signing, filling out a, a health um, uh, survey uh, every few years, you can enroll. Whereas other scientific studies, you have to be enrolled. Someone has to put you into the study. So this is a more public way of including the public in uh, scientific studies. And uh, so we will be finished pretty soon uh, with enrolling our 300,000 and then we'll just collect that information over several years and again try to make associations between your genes or an individual's genes and the life related decisions they make. And again, environment is bigger than just cigarette smoking or breathing in pollution. Environment is everything you subject your body to and that's exercise, that's food. Uh, that's that's all of those things put together. Wow, very very mm -hmm. interesting.